So for those of you who are watching and you're watching on Eugene's channel, my name is Leo. I'm an investor, value investor. I run a YouTube channel where I showcase my stock research tool where I analyze different companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, I focus on just building a strong investor mindset as well as working into the self-improvement side of things to try to build a strong mindset for all those who are looking to get into investing and looking to up, well, improve their skills. Now, I'll bring it over to Eugene. For those that are watching on my channel, Eugene is a phenomenal value investor, but I'll let him tell you the whole story. Hi, guys. My name is Eugene, and i also a value investor, and I learn constantly in this field. I also have 10 plus years of experience in running and created my own businesses. Some of them were sold to private investors, and some of them I own and run nowadays. I had some experience in working with web and app development, search engine optimization, marketing, e-commerce, and blockchain. A couple uh, of years ago, I dig really deep into investing world, learning about Warren Buffett, Charlie Mwangi, Manish Pabrai, and other value investors. And I also created the channel to educate more people and help to think differently about the investing uh, from the business perspective and improve for yourself in finance, business, investing in general. Yeah, it was, uh, and honestly, it's been phenomenal talking with Eugene. We were actually part of the same Facebook uh, in value investing group. So I noticed that he was posting some things on the debt to equity and I, and I looked at his, his videos and I said, oh, he has a YouTube channel as well. So let me reach out to this guy and see. And we're yeah. pretty much, we're very similar in age. We have very, obviously very similar hobbies and interests with uh, investing. So I said, you know what? It'd be great to actually do a video. And so I'm very grateful for this opportunity, Eugene, to actually do this video with you and actually grow this community. I, pre I actually appreciate this time. It's actually really nice. So jumping into the video, we're going to cover dollar cost averaging. So Eugene, we have dollar cost averaging. We have lump sum investing, two different yeah. approaches and how we can deploy capital. So what well, are some of the advantages, yeah. would you say, on dollar cost averaging? Well, first of all, uh, for those people who are new to both you and uh, my channel, we need to understand what the dollar sum cost averaging is really about and Very true. why it is so famous uh, among popular and modern investors. Mm -hmm. So when you use dollar cost averaging, you probably have some portfolio which you need to deploy in one or several stocks. And usually, if you go to the financial advisor, you get the advice to split all your capital into several parts over the certain period of time and invest portion of its capital into certain stocks or one position as well. And the main aspect here is that you do not try to time the market, hoping to get the better price, hoping that the average uh, stock price or asset price uh, for your portfolio will decrease over the future. Yeah, it's it, it definitely is a much more hands-off approach in terms of investing because you're essentially just following a system. And the best part about it that, I mean, one thing that I like about it is you're taking away any kind of emotional involvement because you're just allocating the same amount of capital every single period, whether that's per month, per week, or however you have it, you don't have to worry about, let's say, price dips. And as you treat it almost like a savings account, you put, let's say, allocate, let's say $100, and you just let it ride it through the market. And over time, the asset will appreciate and you'll get it at, let's say, at some points, you might overpay for that asset. But in other cases, you might underpay for that asset. And over time, it'll just average out to be at an increased uh, position in your, or increased value in your portfolio. Yeah, definitely. So in this case, you have some kind of a system when you do not depend on your emotions. You just have initial sum of money. You earn a paycheck and you save some of that every month and you just invest uh, continuously into certain securities. Uh, this uh, model is really, really popular nowadays because you do not, have, do not need to have a lot of money in the beginning. But is it really that successful. Maybe we should try to see that on the real charts and real examples. I think we should. I think we have some data that we've pulled up, right, with uh, the S and P five hundred. All right, yeah. we can and we can take a look at if you're a dollar cost averaging into that and see what that would look like. So I got my sh uh, screen shared up here. So we're gonna look at the S and P five hundred now. 
we can do over, let's say a year amount. So we'll put our initial starting amount at $0 and we put a monthly investment at about $1,000 each month. Now from January, 2021 over to January, 2022, if we calculate that adding $1,000 per month, our initial and our total invested cost basis would come out to be $12,000. Final portfolio value will come out to 12765 And our annualized return would come out to be about 14.18%. Not a bad return if you just did dollar cost averaging from last year to, to this year. How would this compare to lump sum investing? You want to cover that? And if we had to do let's, uh, let's change uh, some numbers mm. here so you sure. we can add ten thousand uh, dollars as a starting amount okay. and we delete the one hundred thousand investment for every month and we can just uh, compare the results in this case so sorry you want to just do the starting amount to be ten thousand and then no uh, additional yeah okay do you want so this do- means that you uh, put all, all your capital at the beginning so without dollar cost averaging and you buy the stock or S&P 500 index in this case on the particular date. Do you want to do particular price? Do you want to put this at 12 because 12,000 would be for the 12. Yeah, let's months. do that. Yes, yes, okay. let's do 12. We'll do that. We'll do 12,000 and calculating that. So our average portfolio cost would come out to be 14,603 and then our annualized return actually turns out to be 21%. Yeah. A higher rate of return. If you were to lump sum into this uh, into the S&P 500 rather than dollar cost average, there has been a, a, an aggressive bull market. So that goes with just the one year. Lump sum investing would triumph over dollar cost averaging in this case. Yeah. If we look on one year period, we can say that, okay, the market is on high mode or on low mode, and we do not have enough information uh, for the next. But if we look on the long-term period, for example, S&P 500 from 1985, suppose you start early and Mm -hmm. uh, you invested initial sum of money over the long period of time, and you held it for several decades. Statistically, you will get more money with lump sum investing than dollar cost averaging because there were more ups of the stock market over the history than downs. So here we can see that starting from 1985, we took every month from that date and we just gathered the close price and just calculated how much of that were in positive or negative results. And as we can see that there were ups to 186 times and downs were 161. So when you use dollar cost averaging, you basically tell that, okay, I understand that over the long period of time, my stock will go up in price. But all over the short period of time, I try to get as low a price as I can. But unfortunately, this not happens a lot of, of the time. Right. So in dollar cost averaging would uh, ultimately be beneficial if you had a lot more downs than ups. Because a lot of some would just, you know, well, if you're having more ups and downs, right? Lump sum is just makes more sense. Yeah, definitely. And it is also makes sense when you see that the market is on the low mode. So when you have uh, some percentage of your portfolio already invested in one particular stock or asset, and uh, you have additional cash which you need to deploy, and you see that the stock goes below the price which you bought the initial asset, you can do the average. Uh, a dollar cost averaging strategy. Uh, so in this case, you will receive lower price for your asset. But if you do this consistently over the long period of time as a systematic approach, you will get higher price uh, for your purchase. Right. I think the, the added benefit of, of dollar cost averaging, and we, we touched upon this, is just the whole emotional aspect, right? Because once you do and commit to lump sum investing, you, you've committed to that sum of money wholeheartedly invested. And now you have to ride that wave up and down with whatever capital you put into it. And for some people, I would I'd probably argue for most people, that's an incredibly hard thing to do. And that's what people make wrong decisions in investing because your emotions get involved. And as soon as your emotions get involved, you're going to either pull out or make further mistakes. So dollar cost averaging, I feel is a much more safer mode of investing because you take that emotions out and you just, just ride it up or ride the market down, doesn't matter what's happening. Yeah, this method is good uh, from that point of view. But mm-hmm. if you look for 
the long-term gain and you see that uh, you need uh, higher returns, right. um, I think that dollar cost averaging strategy is not so suitable in this case. And we can get and add here another example with Facebook stock or Meta. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we have also the table with closed prices uh, for Facebook shares uh, for last five years. And we can see that if we can compare two methods of investing, dollar cost averaging and lump sum investing, suppose that we, in the first case, invest $13,000 uh, and we do it consistently for 13 months, doing $1,000 every month. And we buy shares of uh, this particular stock. So in the first month, we bought seven shares for $151.46. Mm -hmm. Next uh, month, $150, etc. On the other hand, we just invest all $13,000 and we bought 86 shares and we just hold them for a long period of time. And if we compare the result over the five-year period, in the first case, we bought our first share in May 2017, and the last several shares on May 2018. In the end, we will receive $15,217, which is 17.06% on our initial investment. But if we do lump sum investing for this particular period of time, in the end, we will receive $17,206. This will be 32% for our portfolio, which is twice higher than in the first case. What do you think of that? I mean, I think it's, I think it's fascinating. And what's interesting is that, well, currently we both have a position in, in Facebook. So these are 2017 prices, which it's, 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 it's interesting to look at. We both, and we discussed about this earlier, when we bought into Facebook recently, I took a dollar cost averaging approach and yeah. uh, you did a lump sum investing approach. Now, we don't know how those are going to play out, but what I, what I did was I calculated the intrinsic value of Facebook to be a, r roughly worth around, let's say, 300 something dollars a share. And then I initially bought in after their first earnings report back in February when prices dropped to around 240. So I bought it at 240. And then as prices slowly started to decrease, I was just averaging my costs, averaging my costs down. Mm -hmm. So now my costs are around maybe 220 ish in that in that mm -hmm. realm. But what the table that you pulled up here is is brilliant to look at because if you could just scroll up for a quick second, Eugene, that yeah, lump sum investing into that, you would get the lowest price possible essentially. Because then, uh, uh, yes, because if we can see uh, the average price for mm. this whole year, it would be 172. Right. But in the beginning of May 2017, we bought, we deployed all our capital for 151 dollars. Yeah, you lucked out. Now, out of curiosity, what happens if does it do, do the numbers change if you were to let's say bought at the July price, let's say 169? How would that affect your returns? Yeah, you definitely. It also depends on the time when you enter the market. Right. Depends on the condition, on the earnings, because you know when the uh, company releases a quarterly report or annual uh, results, uh, the price can go significantly up or down. But uh, uh, we can do kind of average timing uh, right. when there were no quarterly reports or any specific news about the company. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, right? With lump sum investing, and as we discussed earlier, it's it's an all or, or nothing approach. And in yeah. a case like in a case like this, it yields way more higher returns than dollar cost averaging can ever pull out because, well, you got to be in it. You got to be fully in it, fully committed. Where dollar cost averaging is, it's a much more safer approach. And, and, and if we go through your chart here, we definitely are able to get the stock at a lower price in certain scenarios. Like in our from May to June, there's a little bit of a price decrease. But then as we see the price starts to just take off, jumping to 169, 170, and then eventually it does come down to 159 in what year? I it would definitely go down to 159 and then afterwards mm -hmm. 172 and then back up to 191. So there's a lot of jumps, which is yeah. very it's it's very fascinating. So you're laughing when the price is decreasing, but when you're in lump sum investing, who knows what your emotional status is as you're seeing the price rise and then eventually fall. You know, that's another, that's yeah, the other component. Yeah. So, so uh, while doing the lump sum investing, you need to be very disciplined with that because when you see the price drop in, you maybe uh, have more passion or uh, motivation to buy more. 
uh, but you need to stick to your percentages uh, in order to diversify your portfolio. So this kind of challenging. Exactly. I mean, I, I mean, let's see if I can just turn it over to bring it over to my my calculator here for a quick second. I just put I'm just roughly just put some numbers in here. Not too much of a crazy margin of safety, but we're averaging out to be around four hundred dollars a share for Facebook using my calculator. Now, ultimately, I want to be in the conservative and moderate price range and buy and buy within this window. I mean, granted, we're at two hundred dollars a share, so it's fine if I buy below this price. However, if I had let's say ten thousand dollars, I have now a choice to either lump sum all of it into into this price and say, and we just ride it out, or do the alternative approach and let's say allocate potentially seventy percent of that capital to lump sum investing and leave the next thirty percent to dollar cost average. Now, why would someone potentially do that? Well, if you're lump summing in 70% of your capital, let's say it's $7,000, and you're able to pick up $200 a share, that potentially could be the lowest price you'll ever get. And then let's say if the price goes up by by small increments and you dollar cost average into it, it won't affect your average cost too greatly. However, if let's say the price does go down, now you're getting that added benefit of getting a lower price while still having a, like a, a pretty good entry price from your lump sum investing. I haven't deployed this strategy personally on Facebook. I mean, I've used this with like other stocks. Um, I have took a position in Alibaba. Now that's a company that I've, uh, <laughs> I've deployed a decent amount of capital in. And then afterwards used, uh, I think I, let's say of my total position, 60% probably was lump sum. And then 40, the other 40% end up being dollar cost averaging into it to try to bring that price as low as possible, right? The price that I entered in was decent, but <laughs> you know, I wish I could have gone a little bit lower. It would have made more sense to just wait and then lump sum into it, but that kind of mm-hmm. cushioned the blow. It's just another way of trying to utilize both strategies to try to get the best of both worlds. Yeah, and uh, when you are learning and uh, get more strategies and more ideas for how to invest better, you can combine all these strategies together. So for example, mm-hmm. if you have the portfolio of three to 10 stocks and right. you have the certain percentage in every one of the securities and you see that, for example, Facebook went down in price and you want to buy more. But on the other hand, Alibaba stock went little up. So you can just sell some of the stocks from uh, the second position and just bought the shares which go go down. So in this case, you kind of uh, rebalance your portfolio and initially you will uh, achieve a little higher results. So I think for like just the average person that's looking to get into investing, because now we've explained the two ben- like the benefits of either going the dollar cost averaging route or the lump sum lump sum route. What would be your recommendation if someone were to dollar cost average into, let's say, a particular stock or ETF? What what would you recommend, Eugene? I would personally do more deeper research on the particular stock or mm-hmm. security, and then I have I need to understand uh, how much money should I invest as a total over the long period of time. And understand personally for myself, is it better to put uh, the portion of this money every month or should I take the whole sum if I had this and invest in a particular asset? Right. So it really comes down to a perspective and yeah. if, and then just being able to commit to either one approach or the other or use a hybrid of a hybrid of both. If you're able to, if you have this capital just sitting around, and you want to invest it, but you don't want to commit to either one or the other. And you want to, let's say, use what I just said earlier of allocating, let's say, 70% to, let's say, a lump sum or 70% to dollar cost averaging, however you want to slice it or dice it. You got to, it, the main thing comes down to just perspective. Do you, are you looking over a 10, 20, 30 year period, or is it a short term period? Like we just covered in the beginning part of the video, looking at the SP 500. If you were to just a lump sum into the S&P 500 from the beginning of January, that would have been the correct choice, right? To just mm-hmm. sit on that money and just let and just write it out rather than dollar cost averaging. So in a short term perspective, in a, in a bull market, that might yield better, better results. But over the long term, 
you have to look at your emotional stability and how you're going to handle these markets. Because as we covered in the 30 year example from 1985 to pretty much the present day, there's been a lot of ups and downs in the market. There's been recessions, there's been crashes, there's been different wars and different conflicts that have all affected the stock market. Are you able to actually maintain your composure while the stock price is going down? If you're lump yeah. sum investing, that's that's something that's hard to do, right? Because as we covered, you're going to see this massive price decrease. Are you able, and then eventually it might rise, but can you ride that wave? That's a, that's a huge question. You have yeah, to that's yourself. the mo most difficult part. But as we all and our viewers, uh, beginner mm -hmm. and more, more skillful, are more value investors. So we project that we uh, will get the return over the long period of time. By that, I mean 5, 10, 15 years. At exactly. Least. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you. I'm a, I'm a fan of bear markets. I like bear markets because that's where you make your money. That's Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Me too. And I'm assuming your viewers will all probably agree as well, right? That's So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and it was really useful for you. Today we spoke about dollar cost averaging, how we can use it in our investment strategy and how you can benefit. If you have any additional questions or comments about our video, or any ideas about future videos, please write them down in the comments below. We will definitely look through them and respond on every of your comments. Thank you for watching. Bye.